Welcome to my Illustrated Myths series, where I talk about goddesses and witches from mythology and folklore, and you watch me paint. This week, I'm painting Nyx, the Greek goddess of the night. Appropriately, she's a dark and enigmatic figure shrouded in mystery. We do get some straightforward facts about her from Hesiod's epic poem, Theogony. Hesiod tells us that Nyx is one of the very first goddesses to ever exist. In fact, in some of the myths I read, she's only preceded by her mother, Chaos. Nyx pairs with the primordial god of darkness to have two kind of surprising daughters. One of them is Himera, who's the goddess of the day, and the other is Aether, the goddess of light. From what I can tell, the ancient poets thought of Nyx's body as the night itself, like a veil or a mist of darkness that would cover up her daughter Aether. When it was time for mourning, Himera, or the day, would disperse the mist, letting Aether shine through. But the most important of Nyx's progeny for today's story is one of Nyx's sons, Hypnos, the god of sleep. Hypnos doesn't have a father, Nyx just sort of creates him out of thin air. I guess if you're a mist, that's not out of the realm of possibility. And when she's not out being a mist, Nyx lives pretty far away from the other gods and goddesses, apparently preferring the depths of the underworld to the gilded halls of Olympus. That may be why, despite being an incredibly powerful and awe-inspiring goddess, she's not the main character in any of the myths. Instead, we have myths that allude to her character, leaving her a terrifying mystery. The one I'm telling begins, as most Greek myths do, with a spat between Zeus, king of all the gods, and his wife Hera. Probably the only thing scarier than an angry Zeus with a fistful of lightning bolts, Hypnos thought, was a jealous Hera. And she was standing right in front of him with a mischievous glint in her eye. What do you want? Hypnos sighed, though we already knew. It's something to do with Heracles, isn't it? Hera looked offended. Well, if your husband went traipsing around making all the most famous Greek heroes the world's ever heard of with other women? What would you do? Besides, I'm not going to hurt him. Much. She sniffed. It kind of takes a lot. That did make Hypnos feel a bit better. Heracles was a demigod, after all, and Zeus's son no less. He could probably take care of himself. Look, all I need you to do, Hera said with a toss of her hair, is lull Zeus to sleep. It's what you do, right? He's, he's been having trouble sleeping. You'll be doing him a favor. Hypnos very much doubted that, but he shrugged. If Hypnos played his cards right, Zeus might not even know that anything had happened to him. And anyway, Hera was known for her imaginative punishments, and she didn't take rejection well. Whatever Zeus would do to him couldn't be worse. Right? As lightning bolts rained down around his feet, just barely grazing his heels, Hypnos decided that he might have, in fact, been very wrong. He couldn't see anything in front of him, save for the disorienting strobe effect of the lightning. And the only thing louder than the thunder booming from all sides were the roars of anger coming from Zeus. The king of gods loomed above Hypnos, dominating the sky, and the whole of Olympus had long since found cover in the various halls, shivering and very happy not to be in the god of sleep's shoes. It turned out Hera hadn't managed to hurt Heracles, which was lucky, but she had sent a storm to destroy the hero and all of his ships while Zeus slept. When he woke, Zeus was furious. After hanging Hera upside down from the top of Olympus, the lightning god had known exactly who to come after next. So Hypnos ran, as fast as his feet would carry him. Even though his eyes were useless, Hypnos's feet knew where they were going. They led him down a path away from the glittering palaces of the gods, a path he knew from childhood. 
He was headed for the underworld, to a dark cave in which dwelled the only thing Hypnos could imagine would stop Zeus in his tracks. At the opening of the cave's yawning mouth, Hypnos screeched to a halt, and swallowing his fear, managed to yell out the name of his savior. Mom! Zeus had been blind with rage as he rampaged after Hypnos, so he hadn't really been too focused on where he was going. I mean, he was the god of lightning. What was there really to be afraid of? As he turned a corner and locked eyes with Hypnos, he gripped his lightning bolt, took deadly aim, and froze. From behind Hypnos, deep within the inky blackness of the cave, long, hazy tendrils began to appear. At first, they came slowly, creeping out one by one. Then, their pace quickened, stretching out towards Zeus, taking any shred of light with them. Suddenly, he was very aware of exactly where he was. This was the cave of Nyx. As the mist began to envelop everything in front of him, Zeus felt something rising within his throat, something he hadn't felt in a long time. Fear. With a flood of lightning and a clap of thunder, Zeus was gone, leaving Hypnos clutching his chest with relief. And that's where the story ends, with Zeus running away with his tail between his legs. I do wish the ancient Greeks had written more about Nyx, but at least what we get to see is pretty great. Thank you guys for watching this first episode of Illustrated Myths. If you liked it and want to see more, please like and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to see upcoming videos before they hit YouTube, please check out my Patreon and consider becoming an official patron of my art. I'll put the link below along with the list of all the materials I used in the video. Have a wonderful week!